Craig here from North 49. And have you heard of the Zuma maneuver to treat BPPV affecting the lateral canal? Maybe you've seen it in an article and are not quite sure what is happening anatomically. Or maybe you've performed the Zuma maneuver and you're still trying to figure out what is happening. Well, if that's the case, this video is for you. Because in this video, we use a 3D anatomical model to show you exactly what is happening when you perform the maneuver and why you may want to consider using the modified Zuma maneuver for certain patients. So with treating BPPV affecting the lateral canal, with the roll test, you'll see either geotropic nystagmus where the eyes beat toward the ground or ageotropic nystagmus where they beat away from the ground. And really what's happening is when you see geotropic nystagmus, which is more common, that's indicative of loose otoconia in the posterior arm of the lateral canal. So this is an anatomical model here. This is the anterior lateral horizontal canal and the posterior canal. Okay. And you, if I bring it up closer, you can see there's some loose otoconia in the posterior arm. And so when you do the roll test, that'll present with geotropic nystagmus. Now, less common with treating BPPV affecting the lateral canal, you'll see ageotropic nystagmus, and that'll be indicative of either canalothiasis affecting the anterior arm of the lateral canal. So this is the anterior and the posterior arm, okay? And, or it could be due to otoconia stuck to the cupula. So this model doesn't really show the, the cupula, but it could be stuck, so it could be cupulothiasis. So whether it's cupulothiasis or canalothiasis affecting the anterior arm, you will see ageotropic nystagmus with the roll test, all right? So with the Zuma maneuver, the traditional Zuma maneuver is best for treating ageotropic nystagmus. That's my thought, but, and the reason for that is, is because when you, step number one is you have a person sitting over the edge of the bed, you lay them on their side, okay? Hopefully it breaks some of those otoconia off. If they're free floating, they'll go to the bottom as well. So either you break them off or they just free float to the bottom. Okay, if it's cupular or canal thiasis. Okay. They want you to do the motion suddenly. And then they want you to wait for at least three minutes. Okay, so they're laying on their affected side. So in this case, it's the right ear down because it's an anatomical model of their right ear. After three minutes, we turn them 90 degrees so they're laying on their back. And they want you to do the, the, the motion suddenly again. Wait three minutes. And then you roll them onto the unaffected or the, in this case, the left ear. You can see them go into here. Okay. Again, wait three minutes. And each step is done rapidly. Then you tuck the chin in and slowly sit them up. Okay. So it looks pretty crystal clear. All right. So... That is the Zuma maneuver and why it's good for treating uh, BPV effect in the lateral canal, if it's canal thiasis, affecting the anterior arm, or cupula thiasis. It's also okay for treating uh, canal thiasis affecting the posterior arm, but I'm going to show you something there. Let's get uh, those crystals back in the posterior arm. Okay, so we've got some crystals loose in the, in the posterior arm, anterior, posterior arm of the lateral canal. All right, so if we have the person sitting at the side of the bed and we lay them on the affected side, those crystals, we want them to go this way, but now they're going this way. So they go further into the canal. So they're laying on their right side, wait three minutes. Then we roll them on their back. You can see the crystals move. So really now we're on their back, they're back in the starting position. And then you roll them onto the unaffected side. In this case would be the, the left ear. So the crystals fall back into, into here. Wait three minutes. And they want each of the steps done rapidly. They each position change rapidly. And then wait three minutes. Tuck the chin in, set up. Now you can see the canals clear, but you kind of added a couple extra steps there. So... With the modified Zuma maneuver, what they recommend is 
turning the head 40, when they're sit, patients sitting upright over the edge of bed, turn the head 45 degrees away from the affected ear before you lay them on their side. So you can see the crystals in the posterior arm there. We turn it 45 degrees away and then lay them on their affected side. It doesn't really move that much. Okay, they're, they're 45. And with the modified zoom maneuver, you don't have to do the movement suddenly and you don't have to wait three minutes. So what I recommend is wait for the dizziness to go away and the nystagmus, then it add on a, at least 30 seconds before you do the next step. And you don't have to change position rapidly like the uh, traditional zoom maneuver. Okay, so dizziness is gone, waited three seconds. Have them turn their heads so they're pointing up, so they're laying on their back, nose up. Yeah, it may move a little bit, if any at all. Wait for the dizziness to go away, wait 30 seconds. Roll them onto their unaffected side. You can see those crystals fall back into there. Wait for the dizziness to go away, wait 30 seconds. Tuck the chin in once that's done. And then slowly sit them up. So regardless, the Zuma maneuver will treat, you know, geotropic and ageotropic nystagmus. But it may, you may save yourself a step and some time if you do the modified zoomer, <laughs> zoomer, not zoomer, modified zoomer maneuver where you see geotropic nystagmus with the roll test. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any um, questions on how to perform the maneuver, we have a YouTube video showing that and uh, with some information in the notes for this video as well. So hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you again soon.